So you're thinking about moving to the Augusta, Georgia area, and you really don't know much about the good, the bad, the ugly, about African-American history here, but you really want to know about that before you make your move here. So in today's video, I'll be sharing some shocking information as it relates to African-American history here in Augusta, Georgia. I'll show you some of our historical spots. I'll share some of our really interesting information with you as I'll highlight different historical areas and events here in Augusta. And all of that is coming up just for you right after this. Welcome to the original Living in Augusta, Georgia channel. If this is your first time to the channel, here you'll learn what it's like to live, work, play, and invest in the Augusta, Georgia area. If you're considering relocating to the Augusta, Georgia area, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we get calls and emails, text messages every single day from people relocating here, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're thinking about moving here next month, next six months, or even next year, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, and even if you need to sell your home where you are, we can assist you with that because we have local realtors in your area who can assist you. So give us a call. So today, as we celebrate Black History Month, I'm going to highlight like African-Americans, Black history as it relates to historical events in the Augusta, Georgia area. So as you watch, let me know if you visited any of these historical landmarks I'll mention, and let's get started. So we're going to start at the Wallace Branch Library, which I believe is the absolute perfect place to start. The main purpose of the Wallace Branch Library was to serve the Black community in the South Augusta area back in the 1950s. So this map here is a tile installation piece created by Ashley Gray. This map literally shows historic landmarks, it shows schools, it shows businesses. This map also shows black members of the community who sacrificed and dedicated their lives to provide opportunities for blacks living in Augusta during the Jim Crow area. So this is a map of the golden blocks. This is literally history on the walls. So whenever you come to the Augusta, Georgia area, be sure to take the golden blocks tour. The area known as the golden blocks was the core of Augusta's black business community. There's just a wealth of information here. So years ago, redlining policies really prevented citizens from obtaining mortgages within certain areas of Augusta that were predominantly black. And the Laney Walker and Bethlehem neighborhoods, black-owned businesses, insurance companies, theaters, and other businesses really worked to really get rid of the discrimination. So these neighborhoods, they ultimately thrived and citizens represented on this map made a difference in Augusta's history. So much so that we are literally still benefiting from it today. And right now, I'm in the Springfield Village Park, which is a two and a half acre park. It's adjacent to the Springfield Baptist Church, which is right across the street. Now, that church is the oldest independent black church in the United States. It was organized in 1787, and the actual church was built in 1801 for St. John United Methodist Church. Now, the Springfield purchased the church in 1844. Now, this church has a rich history because they literally helped bridge the transition between slavery and free citizenship. It is the founding place of Morehouse College and it has stood as a focus for the black community life. I literally cannot express to you how I feel right now just knowing the history that is going on on this very ground I'm standing on. Here we have a reflecting pool, the bronze historical plaques and also the stainless steel sculpture that stands it's literally 45 feet tall, the Tower of Aspiration by the Chicago artist Richard Hunt. So we'll check out some more history as we go further along. So now I'm standing in front of the home of Amanda America Dixon Toomer. Amanda was in her time the wealthiest African-American woman in Georgia and one of the wealthiest women in the United States. And they basically referred to her as the woman of color, the daughter of privilege. So she was a product of a 12-year-old mother, an enslaved house servant, Julia Francis Lewis, and a 40-year-old father, David Dixon, which was a well-known agricultural reformer back in his area, Eric. And he was also one of the wealthiest planters in the area. So when her father father died, he left her all of his property, which was over 15,000 acres of land in a couple counties here in Georgia, and also all of his possessions, all of his money, everything was a little bit over $300,000. So although the will specifically warned the Dixon family members not to come against his wishes, 79 relatives filed a lawsuit to prevent Amanda from inheriting the property.
property. So the Superior Court of Hancock County, they upheld her claim and the family appealed the Georgia Supreme Court. So then the court ruled in her favor in 1887 that Amanda Dixon was legally entitled to the inheritance under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which states that the property rights are equal for blacks and whites, including the offsprings of the blacks and white citizens. So she later moved here to Augusta, Georgia, so right here to this home that is right behind me. And she lived here on Tailfair Street in the most prominent neighborhood in the city of Augusta. I really appreciate you all joining me for so much history. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel because we have so much information on Augusta, Georgia. So directly behind me is the Lucy C. Laney Comprehensive High School, which opened in 1949. Now for almost 15 years, this was the only public high school in Augusta for African Americans. Now some of Lucy Laney's notable graduates include the New York Jets running back Emerson Boozer, world-renowned opera singer Jesse Norman, professional golfer Jim Dent, television, movie, and stage actor Jerome Preston Bates, the Honorable Edward M. McIntyre, which was Augusta's first African-American mayor, and then philanthropist Ann Johnson and also Ellis so Johnson. So established in 1898 at a different location, this business right behind me, the Pilgrim Health and Life Insurance Company, started with just $2.50, and it grew to become one of the largest Black-owned insurance companies in the United States. The first president of the Pilgrim Insurance Company was Reverend Thomas Jefferson Hornsby, which was the pastor of Antioch Baptist Church. So the building on the corner of 12th and what is today Laney Walker is owned by the former state senator Charles Walker. So right behind me is the building, which is the Pilgrim Health and Life Insurance Civic Room building. So this building is owned by businesswoman D. Crawford. So the building is still here today. A lot of history has gone on right here on this ground that I'm standing on. So Augusta is full of history. So right now I'm standing outside of the Bowlers home. So the Bowlers were a prominent Amer African American family for many generations in the Augusta, Georgia area. In fact, Mr. Lewis Bowler Sr. served as a treasurer for Tabernacle Baptist Church and also a clerk for the railroads. He was one of the most powerful Prince Hall Masons in the state of Georgia. And uh, as a young child, Martin Luther King Jr. would stay right here at the Bowler residence when he would visit Augusta with his father, Reverend Reverend Martin Luther King Sr. and the rest of the family. And Lieutenant Henry Cabot Lodge Bowler was a member of the famed Tuskegee Airmen and his brother's father, Louis Bowler Jr. served many decades as a minister and also a civil rights activist. So we had a dream, even before King said, I have a dream. We had a dream that someday this would, although nothing in our daily life suggested it would change. We just knew that it would. And it did, of course, back then. But uh, we felt that we could be anything that anybody could be. So directly behind me across the street is the Penny Savings and Loan Bank. So this bank was incorporated in September of 1910 by several prominent African-American businessmen here in Augusta. So the bank operated right here for 18 years in this location, in this neighborhood, until 1928 when the business had to close its doors due to just basically downward financial trends because of the depression. So the Penny Savings Loan and Investment Company was in the area known as the Golden Blocks. So that's Augusta's African-American business district. So this three-story building was rehabbed in 1990 and it was purchased by the Augusta Richmond County in 2011 who currently own the property and so they're, it's currently vacant and it's been vacant for a number of years so far so unfortunately the future of the building is really unknown we're not really sure what's going to happen with the building but the building is still here as a staple in the community. There's so much rich history here in Augusta, Georgia. Let me know in the comments what stood out to you. Is there something that I shared that you didn't know about or is there something that you'd like to share that you know about with Augusta history? Let's keep it positive and let's keep it informative. Go ahead and drop it in the comments and share what you know about Augusta or what you enjoy about Augusta. So the Lucy Craft Laney Museum is literally the largest African American museum in the central Savannah River area, which is what we call it the CSRA. So Augusta and its surrounding area. The museum opened in 
one. It's a small house museum that was formerly the home of Miss Lucy Craft Laney. So Miss Laney, she dedicated her life to providing educational opportunities for black youth in the Augusta area. She was a founder of the Haynes Normal and Industrial Institute, which was located on the present site of Lucy Laney Comprehensive High School. She started one of the first kindergarten programs for black children in Augusta, and she founded the Lamar School of Nursing for Black Women. So she was one of the co-founders of Augusta's branch of the NAACP, which was established in her home in February of 1917. So the Lucy Laney High School, Laney Walker Boulevard, and Laney Walker North Historic District have all been named in Miss Laney's honor. So the museum is located in the historic Laney Walker District near the original site of the Haynes Normal and Industrial Institute. So really the purpose of the Lucy Craft Laney Museum of Black History is to promote the legacy of Miss Lucy Craft Laney through arts and history. So this is really done by educating and exposing children and adults to the arts, history, literature, and leadership through exhibits and programs. And of course, the museum is open for all. So now, before you relocate to the Augusta, Georgia area, you'll have a better idea of some of the rich Black history here in the Augusta, Georgia area. And when you're ready to take your dive and make your mark here in Augusta, we'll be happy to help you with your real estate needs. Just give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email. Better yet, there's a link down below in the comments. Click the link to schedule a Zoom. Let's connect. I'd like to hear about your plans to relocate, how we can help make the process as smooth as possible for you and prepare you for your big move. Contact information is on the screen. Once again, I'm Delrisa Rollison, Augusta's relocation specialist, and see you in the next video. Music